Sometimes it's difficult to have a positive self-image, isn't it? We're so aware of our failings and those parts of our lives of which we are deeply ashamed. And we may think that we are unlovable and certainly not worthy of God's love. But that's not how God sees us. Listen to this description of who you are from 1 Peter chapter 1. You've been chosen and destined by God the Father and sanctified by the Spirit to be obedient to Jesus Christ and to be sprinkled with his blood. God thinks that you are worth choosing. How amazing is that? And if that's how God sees you, then that must change how you see yourself if you struggle with a positive self-image. But the fact that God has chosen us to be obedient disciples of Jesus has a big impact on how we live our lives. We are strangers in this world. As Peter says here, we are exiles. It's like our time here on earth is living as strangers in a foreign land. This world is, for us as Christians, a temporary home, a foreign place as we journey from God and back to God. And of course, that creates tensions for us in how we behave or the choices we make and the relationships we form and the ambitions and goals we aim for. We've been chosen by God the Father and consecrated by the Holy Spirit to live obedient lives and we've been sprinkled by the blood of Jesus so that we can live out our salvation here on earth. But here is a lifestyle worth embracing, because as Peter says, following Jesus results in us receiving grace and peace in abundance. Not because we deserve it or have earned it, but because it is the gift of God to us. And that gift is established for us, as Peter says in verse 3, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. The resurrection of Jesus is the cornerstone of our faith. It's through his resurrection that we have a wonderful future to look forward to. But how can we be confident in that? Well, we have every confidence, as we read in verse 4. He brought us into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled and unfading, kept in heaven for you. This is our inheritance, reserved for us in heaven. Something that we can hope for with real confidence that as Peter says in verse 5 it will be revealed to us in the last time when Jesus returns and so because we have such a wonderful hope for the future as Peter says in verse 6 in this you rejoice rejoicing in our hope should be a key part of our Christian way of living as we think about our eternal security with God it changes everything about how we live today But rejoicing in our future doesn't make all our problems disappear. We know that life can be really tough, but we have a choice about how we face the difficulties of life. We can either let them overwhelm us, or we can allow God to use those difficulties to refine us and mature our faith. Listen to what Peter writes in verses 6 and 7. For a little while you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith may be found to result in praise and glory and honour when Jesus is revealed. So we want God to use our difficulties to confirm in us the hope onto which we cling. So even in difficult times, when we may be wondering what on earth is going on, and we may be lacking in self-confidence or riven with anxiety and worry, we need to hold on to the amazing truths contained in Peter's words here. Each one of us has been chosen by God. We are valued and loved by God for who we are, and we must work really hard at seeing ourselves how God sees us. But being chosen by God can lead to difficult choices as we seek to live lives that honour him. But if we do that, God will give us grace and peace and real hope for the future. And the deeper we move into an understanding and experience of that, the more we will be able to rejoice in life, even in the tough times. And so our faith will be strengthened. Hold fast to the faith in the sure knowledge that God in his love is holding fast to you and he will never let you go, not in this life or in the next.